Hey everyone, it's Sally here and today I'm super thrilled to share some insider secrets about the business world in the Philippines that nobody really talks about. I mean, they are actually earning a lot and the great thing is this is not some type of business that is short term. We want to have a long term one so that we can pass them on to our kids, grandkids, or the next generations. You better listen, especially to the last one. You will be surprised like I was when I learned about it. So here's how I got this information. When we went to the Philippines, we bought a big bike or a motorcycle because my husband is a passionate rider. And because of that, we are able to join different motorcycle groups where we've had the privilege of connecting with some of the wealthiest and most successful business owners. These folks are not only passionate about their expensive motorcycles, but also about their successful businesses. So every time we we go for a ride, we get to know each other and talk about business. And in this video, I'm going to share some of it with you. Are you ready? Let's go. First business is coming from one of the members who just bought one of the most expensive Ducati motorcycle. It cost 2.5 million pesos or 43,000 US dollars. And mind you, he bought it in cold cash. Together with all his other motorcycles like BMW. Time to reveal business number one, bakery business. Yep, you heard it right, a bakery. Now, you might think think a bakery but let me tell you this isn't just any bakery this is a family-owned business that's been passed down through generations they supply baked goods to various areas and provinces sometimes he just takes a ride and collects payments from their clients in different locations now let's go to business number two water refilling station business now this is not just any water refilling station. Actually, they are the ones selling water refilling business to people. Clean drinking water is a necessity and these businesses are booming. Especially with the growing population, clean drinking water is in demand. Their story is very inspiring because he first worked as an employee in a water refilling station, then he started their own. And now, they sell it to other people who want to have a water refilling station business nationwide. Very profitable business and it enables them to have other businesses like printing business, restaurant, and a resort. Now it's time to reveal business number three and this might surprise you. It's a gasoline station. Many people think that starting a gasoline station requires big capital and is incredibly hard. But one of our friends began with a simple generic gasoline station in a small town or barangay, catering to small vehicles like tricycles and motorcycles. And from their humble beginnings, they managed to grow that business and now they have multiple locations. When we sat down and talked about numbers, we were impressed and opened my eyes on the potential earnings of a gasoline station. He has employees at all his locations, so it is earning pretty much passively. Even his slowest gasoline station sells around 6,000 liters per day according to him, with a profit margin of 4 pesos to 10 pesos per liter. That means his slowest station is earning a minimum of 720,000 pesos per month in profit. Of course, you have to reduce staff wages, taxes, and utilities. Now, if you are wondering how much does a gasoline station cost, that depends on the location, how big the property is, and how many pumps does it have. Just to give you an idea, our friend is selling his slowest gasoline station for 20 million pesos. Now, go do your number. I've noticed that these friends of ours have some similarities with regards to their characters and I think that contributed to their success and I'm going to mention them one by one later. Now let's go to the next business. Business number four, poultry farm business. Now this business requires a bigger investment but also holds substantial earning potential. A modern poultry farm can cost around 20 million pesos and can hold about 30,000 to 50,000 heads of chicken. 
big companies like San Miguel and Bounty will partner with you to grow their chickens. And the estimated income is about 500,000 pesos per harvest. And that is every month. Now, what our friend did was he built another two poultry farms to multiply their income. More farms, more chickens, and more income. If you don't have 20 million pesos to start, renting a farm in the beginning is a viable option because that's how they started. This might not be for everyone because it involves a huge amount of capital, but knowing this type of business is good, especially if you have accumulated large sums of money and want to build more businesses. Three of our co-riders have this type of business and it's really a good one, especially since it is a food industry. The population is continuously growing, so more food supply is needed. And chicken is one of the most famous meats in the Philippines. Now, finally on our list, it is really shocking for me because I have never heard about the details of this business before. I mean, I see them everywhere. But this is the first time to meet and actually talk to an owner and know the numbers. I'm sure you will be surprised too. Are you ready? Okay, it's a funeral business. Yes, you heard it right, a funeral business. Now, are you curious how much a funeral business makes? Okay, let's take the word of our friend. According to him, they are making 500,000 pesos to 1 million pesos per week because customers just come anytime, any day. Even when they are away on a vacation, they are earning. Obviously, they have employees who manage their business. They will just take calls if their employees have questions. They even joke that sometimes they don't want to answer the phone because it's just too much. But I guess that's a good problem, right? More customers than what you can accommodate. During our conversation, I got curious how they started and how they become so successful in this business. And I was told that it was a family business. His father passed it down to him and now he continues the legacy. They were in a town where they built solid connections in the community so that when people need a funeral service, they just go to them directly. There were actually two of them in our group who have the same business, and both of them are really successful and wealthy. As I've gotten to know these amazing people and learn about their businesses, I have noticed some common traits they all share. They are humble, generous, and risk takers. Remember, success isn't just about what you know, but who you know. So, keep networking, stay curious, and always look for the untapped potential around you. Surround yourself with people you want to become. Like one of my favorite quotes, you become who you hang around with. What business ideas have you come across that are rarely talked about? I'd love to hear your thoughts.